serious, people who listen to emergency radio scanners, what is the creepiest pandemonious thing that you've heard over the airwaves? I was fascinated with scanners when I was in my early teens. One night, back when you could pick up any cell phone call within miles, as they were analog and unencrypted in the 900 MHz band, I was scanning through the 900 MHz band and my scanner stopped on an unused frequency. All I heard was and then I'll bring the Rottweiler in and let him frick you. How do you like that? It was kinda shocking to my 13 year old self. I think I switched frequencies when I heard that. Now I wonder what else was said oh oh. When we had the Waldo Canyon fires here in Colorado, a buddy of mine sent me a link to a scanner broadcast keyed in on the firefighters. They entered a house that was about to go up in flames and found a woman dead in a bathtub, and then left because the house was about to go up. It was really straightforward. Like yep, ladies dead let's go. What a hellish situation to be that calm in. If I remember correctly, I thought it was only one elderly couple who died in that fire as they didn't want to leave their house or something like that. I evacuated with my mom while the fire was rolling down the hill toward our apartment about 600 feet behind and could see the flames clear as day. I worked at an for a while so the scanner was always on. One night the ambulance was responding to a call about a young man that was unresponsive and the mom was doing CPR. A couple of minutes later it came in that it was attempted suicide and then when they arrived they called for a coroner and could hear the family screaming and crying in the background. Right after that we get a call and it's our co-worker. Her son had hung himself with a belt in a closet and tried to resuscitate him and she was hysterical. Truly heartbreaking. Some years ago our fire chief was the first responder to a call that turned out to be his son having died choking himself for pleasure. I can't imagine you ever really recover from that. Heard a man saying, hey, hey shush, hey shush, quiet, quiet, you're not getting out, shush, shush, you're not leaving, you're mine, I live in rural Pennsylvania by a large patch of woods. He was hunting in the woods and was talking to himself while aiming. Grew up in a remote area where police were hours away so we all listened to scanners and would rush to help as a community until police got there. A neighbor called in a motorcycle accident up the street from our house at a bad curve where there had been lots of accidents over the years. My dad would often take us along to help. We rushed out knowing an ambulance is usually at least 45 minutes away. We pulled up to the motorcycle and a guy laying in the ditch. I knew something was different because dad told me to stay in the car. It was his best friend. He was dead. It was one of the few times in my life I saw dad cry. Not sure if I made it in time, but I am a radio officer in the Coast Guard. Kind of half 911 operator, half air traffic controller. I've heard lots of chilling calls. People drop dead on deck and try to get resuscitated. People whose vessels are going down and they know they won't be around long and give you messages to families etc. One of the worst, a fellow was on a fishing boat with his pal. It was really early in the morning, and he was cruising along. Well the guy must have been turned to the back of the boat while his buddy was in the back messing around with some gear. He didn't notice a sandbar, and hit it hard. His friend was thrown from the back into the wheelhouse and bashed his head. The guy called in while doing CPR, and his friend was clearly dead from the description, but he just kept going. Crap like that can keep you up at night. When you switch from bicycles and cars to anything else, the training wheels come off. You really have to be dang careful driving big trucks, boating in the open ocean, etc. At least I have enough experience to know when I don't have enough experience. I am glad USCG is out there. I have heard some nasty situations on channel 16 before with sinking vessels. I'm a cop, so listening to a police radio is something I obviously do all day, every day. Car crashes, house break-ins, assaults, those are all routine. The calls that send chills up my spine are actually the silent ones. When you hear a radio squelch, and maybe one or two words from another officer, a fight or gun and then silence, then there's just dead air, and everyone stops what they're doing while dispatch tries to figure out who it was, and where they are. As a dispatcher and Leo spouse, those silent calls are the absolute worst. Our officer assist tones are haunting. My dad was a volunteer firefighter so we always had the scanner on. One night when I was about 10 the tornado sirens went off. We ran to the basement and once we were settled we turned on the scanner. 
That night I listened to police and firefighters, many of whom's voice I recognized, give a play by play of our town getting destroyed as if it was a goddamn football game. I listened to business names and street names trying to remember where my friends lived. My dad left to help, then we heard my street. The next morning the house two doors down was gone. I didn't sleep well for a long time after that. Sometimes ignorance really is bliss. Sometimes I wonder what the people who had home bunkers to be used in the case of a nuclear event would have experienced when they came out. No one really knew who had a bunker. Even today no one knows how many backyard bunkers there are. To think that they might have came out and have been the only survivor. S. In their neighborhood. Subdivision. Etc. When I was working for a federal government land management agency in Montana a few years back, something really creepy came over the repeater network. While we were working in a canyon that had very poor radio reception, we heard a very long, creepy, and drawn out moan come over the air. This was followed by a very weak, in both reception and tone, help, me, in a women's voice. All of us freaked the frick out. These weak cries for help kept repeating low guttural, help me, on until dispatch finally stepped in and said this is a federal emergency network, unless you have an emergency, get off this channel, this was followed by another plea for help, then a gunshot and screaming, turns out two local crazies were out four wheeling, going straight up steep embankments, when the ATV flipped backwards, pinning the man under the ATV, both of them being high on some substance, they started freaking out, the man, being perfectly fine, except for being pinned by the leg and high, started to hallucinate that he was bleeding out, pulled out his handgun and shot himself to make it quicker. Because they were four wheeling so far back in the sticks, a helicopter was needed to retrieve the body. Must have been on some heavy crap to even contemplate shooting himself. God dang. I work for a newspaper, and we have a scanner in the newsroom. I used to work the overnight shift, alone. So I was responsible for keeping an ear out for stuff going on. Luckily, it's a pretty small town, so it's pretty quiet at night. One night, I heard a cop responding to a suspicious group of people in a park. Then, dead air, which wasn't entirely unusual. I heard the call in, moments later, from the officer coming in to back him up when she found him shot in the head, near death. I listened as the other officers searched desperately for the man who shot him. It was so scary hearing how desperate, helpless, and furious those officers sounded. That was several years ago now and I will never forget it. I always wanted to go into law enforcement as my grandfather was a chief of police. So I had a pro model scanner that I listened to as often as most listen to their favorite FM radio station. When I was 18, I worked the graveyard shift. Well after I was done with work. I came home turned on my scanner and went to sleep as I usually did. I woke around 11am and was listening to the dispatchers. All of a sudden they mentioned my home address. I was shocked and got out of bed excitedly to go tell everyone in my family that I just heard our address on the scanner. When I turned the corner in the hallway to go into the family room, the people from our fire department were coming in the door and my dad way laying on the sofa in full cardiac arrest. I will never forget that moment as long as I live. For your information, my dad did survive but was never the same. He had 7 full arrests that day and was in a coma for a month. He was 48 and died at 57. He was taking an average of 160 pills, yes 160 pills, per day to survive. I think he just got tired of taking all of the medication. My dad stopped taking his pills as well. It was hard to let him go but we had no right to keep him. He did what was right for him. I hope you have come to terms with it. Easy. There was a huge thunderstorm. Police mentioned a young black male brandishing a gun, dressed in nothing but a towel. HQ said something like, to confirm, armed young black male dressed in only a towel around his waist officer, mom, I didn't say anything about it being on his waist. I'm a Leo in a rural area. So we get odd calls pretty often from elderly people that are starting to lose their grip on reality. One time around midnight I got dispatched to a call where an elderly woman saw children in her yard. She was worried about them and wanted them sent home. On the way there she's still on the phone with dispatch describing them and where they are in her yard. I get to her house, a lightly wooded area on a rural road about 100 yards off the road. No yard lights or anything. 
There aren't any children in the yard so I knock on her door. She invites me in and starts telling me about the kids. She points to a window that peers out into the darkness and says there was a little girl standing there staring at her. The little girl smiled, gave a wave and walked away from the window. The woman knew she was still there because she could still hear the little girl giggling. I went back to my car and left. We get calls like this all the time that you know the person is going crazy. Mental illness, old age, drugs, etc. But they are so serious it almost makes you believe. My time to shine. My then girlfriend, now wife, worked the same city 911 system as paramedic. She worked days, I worked nights. She had finished her shift and went home. We lived together. I was working overnight. Around 3 in the morning, I heard dispatch send a unit to our address for a shooting. A lot of times these are unfounded but I was still freaking out. The unit was operating on a different band different radio bands for different parts of the city so my partner and I switched to that band to listen. We heard it was a confirmed death. From a gunshot wound. I was crying and driving up to my house. 20 minutes away. But then heard the report. 30 year old male. Gunshot wound to the chest. Coroner request. I page someone who tells me again that it is a male. Not female. That is dead. In my house. I call my girlfriend. She doesn't pick up. For some reason I log on to Facebook and see a picture she uploaded of her and her niece at her brother's house. I totally forgot she was babysitting that night. Still didn't answer who the heck was in our house. Turns out two men broke into our house and one shot the other. I was scared thinking what if my girlfriend had been home. But the neighbor saw the two men sitting in a car across the street for a few hours. Most likely waiting until she left. This was the worst thing to hear over the radio. And such a relief in the end. Turns out two men broke into our house and one shot the other. Alright Jimmy. You go upstairs. I'll go downstairs. Forget your partner is upstairs. Get spooked and shoot him. I've always wondered if this happens. Late to the thread. But the most heart wrenching thing for me is final tone outs. When I was with fire rescue. One of our firefighters from our station was killed. At the service, we had our radio, and they'd do a final tone out for your station along with his badge number. 14 years later and I still tear up thinking about it. Yeah, final tones can be haunting. Especially when you're standing at full salute for your rescue squad's newest volunteer at their funeral and you hear it echo over a dozen radios at once. I wouldn't say creepy, as much as funny, and yes it did cause a bit of pandemonium. I've stated in another of credits that I'm a model railroader. Well, I'm also a rail fan, so it's not uncommon for me to be out with a camera and a scanner listening to the train dispatch radio calls. Mostly to get an idea of when a train is coming so I can photograph it. Couple years back, I was out one night when I happened to hear a rather amusing call between a dispatcher and the local fire department's radio dispatch. I'll try to recreate it best I can, but as with everything it's one of those you had to have been their stories. CSX Dispatch. City FD, this is dispatch for CSX. Could you roll a truck or two down our way? FD, what's the matter? CSX Dispatch, we have a fire. FD, nature of the fire? CSX Dispatch, diesel fuel fire. FD, locomotive or spill? CSX, locomotive, FD, okay, we'll roll two trucks, just head down to the yard there, CSX, oh no, hang on, a few minutes pass, CSX, okay, it'll be at the 3rd street crossing in about 4 minutes, you can meet it there, what happened was the second locomotive back on a train blew its engine and threw a rod through the crankcase, the heat caused the fuel to catch fire, and it torched the engine, while it was still moving. Most unique and interesting thing here so far. Mid 90s. San Fernando Valley. CA. Listening to a cheap Radio Shack scanner late one night when I hear this exchange between an LAPD unit and dispatch. Officer. Just observed a motorcycle traveling eastbound on Devonshire passing Tampa. At a very high rate of speed. Dispatch. Do you have a vehicle description? Pause. Officer. It had a red light on the back of it. That was the end of it. We have, a, a man who assaulted his neighbor here because his TV was on and it's, a, Earth Day, burst out laughing. My stepdad kept one constantly running in our garage. 
One night I heard my cousin's address go over the scanner about a noise complaint, and called him immediately. I knew he was having a party, so I figured that it was just getting loud. Some random person answers my call. House phone back in 2000. Get a freaking ambulance here and drops the receiver. I'm listening to shouts and scuffling over the phone and more codes coming over the scanner. A 10-1 is called in. I hear a gunshot on the phone and scanner simultaneously. Then, drop the weapon. Drop it. Two more gunshots. A group of guys who didn't like my cousins had rolled up 12 deep to the party and just started swinging on people in the yard. The first call to the cops was from a neighbor hearing the fight starting. Two more before the first shot I heard and three after. Eleven cops arrived and tried to stop the brawl. Two were injured. One seriously from some idiot who threw a chunk of concrete. The first shot I'd heard was from a girl who pulled a handgun. Shot at one of the thugs. And accidentally hit another girl in the stomach. Everyone survived but dang was that crazy to hear. That's just a grade A cluster fuck. The most troubling thing I hear is the police not responding to things. I live in a small town that doesn't have full time local cops. The 911 dispatcher comes on and reports some incident on some street. A few minutes pass. They make the same call out again. More time passes. Then somebody else comes on and reports that no officers are currently on duty. So then they call for the state police. And they'll respond as much as an hour later. And then there are some places where they won't go even if there is an officer on duty. They just don't respond and eventually pass that to the state cops. Where I live. You're just on your own when there are no local police officers on duty. I used to be a park ranger for a top 1% affluent town and we carried police radios. I thought the summer was going to bring wild and exciting communications. These two events were most notable. Domestic abuse incident between a daughter and her mother. One hit the other like once and there was a lot of yelling and temper tantrum behavior. Report of a white male walking down the street with a backpack and long hair. I crap you not. They sent police to question someone for walking down the street without a suit or polo shirt and having hair like Jon Snow. When I was about 14, I discovered the scanner that my mom had could pick up cordless phone calls. I'd spend hours eavesdropping on neighbors, even after my mom told me multiple times to stop. I got addicted to it, even though most of it was boring. I did hear a single mom down the street get talked into leave her young child home alone to go hook up with a guy across town. But the one that freaked me out was the neighbor across the street. Him and his girlfriend argued on the phone for a couple of hours one night. Toward the end of it, she broke up with him. He was crushed and was in tears. After much unsuccessful begging by him, she finally hung up. A couple of minutes later, he calls her back and says, I just want you to hear this. I then hear, both through the scanner and through my bedroom window, a shotgun go off. I was scared shitless. I had just witnessed a suicide. I wasn't sure what to do. Part of me wanted to go tell my mom what I had just heard but I also knew that I'd get in trouble. After what seemed like a lifetime, it was only about 20 minutes, a cop car showed up at the guy's house. They were in there for about a half hour before leaving. No ambulance or anything. I was so confused. A short while later, the girl calls the guy and starts to yell at him for being such an idiot. From what I could gather, he had just pointed the shotgun out his back door and pulled the trigger. That was the end of my eavesdropping. Ro, that's one seriously emotionally manipulative but, she was right to leave him. I'm in law enforcement, in Charleston. As stupid as the radio got recently after the AIM church shooting, the one that sticks out to me is from a little under a year ago. A deputy sheriff was shot while responding to a noise complaint. The shooter simply fired rounds through the door of his apartment when the deputies arrived. Joe, the deputy who was first hit, wound up dying from his wounds, while his trainee was dragging a veteran deputy away from the line of fire. Then the call came out that one of the medics had a heart attack and died. It was a mess on the radio, and a heck of a way for that trainee to be introduced to the reality of law enforcement. Joe was a good cop, and a great guy. Everyone in Charleston law enforcement, all the way up to feds, felt his loss. Dang. This one was sad. I live in Texas, about 100 miles inland. There was a huge hurricane heading for the coast, and even this far inland, we were told to be prepared. 
I remember my dad and I decided to go to hub a few hours before the storm was supposed to hit, just to get a box of instant pudding mix, and the store was complete chaos. Well, all the warnings were pretty much pointless. We didn't get a drop of rain, but we did get a shitload of wind. My mom and I were downstairs listening to the scanner, my dad was in the kitchen making pudding, and my brother and sister were upstairs sleeping. The wind was causing power lines to go down, knocking out power to parts of the county. Every once in a while, we'd hear a routine police call. Then we heard the call. An ambulance was requested at such and such address for a tree that had fallen on a young teen male. My mom got a concerned look on her face and grabbed the phone book. She flipped to her page and told me, that address is the last name's house. So and so last name was my brother's best friend, and he was the only boy his age living at the house. We continued listening to the scanner, and dispatch called back and said, you can go ahead and send the ambulance, but you also need to send the JP. My mom told me I needed to go upstairs and wake up my brother. I did, and I brought him downstairs. My mom had to explain to my brother that we had just heard his best friend died over the scanner. This probably isn't quite what OP is looking for but I'll post it anyway. During the riots protests in Baltimore City following the death of Freddie Gray while in police custody I started listening to the police scanner while at my office. I live and work in Baltimore and my office is not far from where the epicenter of protests and eventually violence broke out. A call came across the scanner. Officer, male number one wearing a suit has a semi-automatic pistol on his hip. Looking for him now. Captain or dispatch? Not sure. Question him and check is it. Find out what he's doing. Officer, he says he's Anderson Cooper security detail. He's got credentials and license to carry. Not really creepy, but a few years back, my friends and I decided to drive down to the local park to hang out by the lake that is there. I should probably mention that it was night time and the park closes at dusk. Problem was, during the winter, they put a log and some jersey barriers in front of the entrance to the parking lot where you gain access to the lake. To discourage people from doing donuts in the snow, my friend's car was small enough to squeak by, but my car had to remain on the other side. As we are sitting there, we decide to turn on a police scanner app for funsies. All of a sudden, we hear over the airwaves two unidentified cars parked at Hutchinson Park. We all exclaimed oh crap and proceeded to back out and split up between the two cars. Sure enough, there was someone parked about 30 feet from my car with one of those store bought blue siren lights. We managed to escape before any real cops arrived. Thank goodness for scanner apps. I lived in a boring, semi rural town growing up. My dad worked nights. On Friday nights, my stepmom would order pizza before the pizza place stopped delivering to our address. Funny story, and we'd listen to the police scanner. There was barely anything else to do in this town, so the scanner was great entertainment. So one Friday, we're chowing down on some pizza and listening to the scanner and they keep reporting something like bear on the loose in our neighborhood. The dispatcher said something about it being a possible prank call, and the calls kept coming. After a while of this, the dogs start barking, and we hear a rustling and scratching sound on the back porch of our trailer. I turn on the porch light and look out the window. It was a freaking black bear. My stepmom calls the police. The dispatcher gave her attitude, thinking it was a prank call. I let the dogs in the front door and we got the shotgun and waited. Eventually the bear wandered off. It was funny because no one had ever seen a bear in our area. Most exciting thing that ever happened in our little town. TL. DR. Bear tried to break into our house. Dispatcher thought there was a rash of prank calls about a bear in our neighborhood. I used to work for a radio company. There was a guy listening to the police scanner, and there was an accident. Two families including five children had been run over by an out of control Mustang. They were my kids, along with my ex-wife, and her friend with her kids. That must have been devastating. I'm so sorry for your loss. My daughter and her husband live the next town over on something like a cul-de-sac, let's say Elm Circle. Listening to the scanner, two young males rob a convenience store, unusual for our town. The officers on duty post up at the major intersections after the dispatcher gives the vehicle desk. Looking for the car, they rob another convenience store. The LT reminds them all to actively watch for the vehicle. 
Suddenly, you hear one key up with his motor winding up fast asking again for the plate number. Dispatcher calmly repeats. He calmly says he's in pursuit, gives his location direction, and you can hear he's got the engine pegged the frick out. Another officer says he's on his way to back him up and first officer calls out his pursuit, just like he's giving a set of directions to a tourist. No raised voice, no tension in the voice at all. Mentally, I note that they are headed toward the town where my daughter lives. I hear the first officer say that they're throwing bags out at, location, engine still screaming, dispatcher repeating everything the officer says very calmly, then they turn off main road onto side road, and side road to small road. At this point I pick up the phone to call my kid because these armed robbers are in her neighborhood. Her husband wakes up all confused because it's the middle of the night. I scream get up, wake up, the cops are chasing robbers into your neighborhood well, they're not here, so I'm going back to sleep. At that instant, officer says he's turning onto their Elm Street, one block long, dead end. I go up a shit omg they are on your street officer calmly but quickly says they're bailing. I'm on foot and dispatcher repeats, then silence, total silence for like 3 minutes. My heart stopped, finally his backup starts saying he can't find him. Dispatcher calmly asks for location, no response, LT asks for location, no response, after forever, officer says dispatch one in custody, one on foot loose, I could have died, anyway that's the most gut wrenching thing I ever heard on one, people in our services will get their asses chewed if they act wild on the radio, it's also a point of pride to be able to key up in the middle of a shitstorm and sound perfectly calm. We've had squad meetings where folks have gotten dispatched to burn a CD with stupid radio traffic so newbies can hear how they sound when they lose their crap. Radio discipline is a big deal in some places. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.